Tangier Island, isolated from the Virginia mainland by the Chesapeake Bay. Nearly 1,000 people live on this tiny island, far removed from the rat race of the city, the problems of crime, pollution, and higher energy costs. They make their living from the waters of the Chesapeake Bay. It's a unique place where the American ethic still lives. During the next 30 minutes, 13 News will take a second look at Tangier. Tangier Island, a dot on the map in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. The nearest land is Maryland, 10 miles away. From Virginia, it's 14 miles across the bay. There are almost 1,000 people that call this place their home. Nearly all were born here, nearly all will die here. The people on this land don't like to think of it as unique, but in many ways it is. But while it is unique, Tangier Island is similar to any small town. People here refer to it as country living, but to a city dweller, it's unlike any country they've ever seen. They speak with an old English accent handed down from generation to generation. At one time or another, you've probably thought about getting away from it all, leaving the rat race behind. If that's the way you feel, there's no better place to come than to Tangier Island. This is Main Street of Tangier Island. There are hardly any cars on the island, so everyone must travel by bicycle. Years ago, in front of every house stood a white picket fence. But the streets are so narrow that when cars came by, they tore up the picket fences. And now, chain link stands everywhere, a guardian to everyone's front lawn. This is Vernon Bradshaw. One of the few picket fences left on Tangier belongs to him. It's uh, rather uh, congenial sort of living, you know, uh, uh, it's easy in a way, living. Although we really work hard, most people around here work hard, but it's easy, easy living. It's, uh, you don't have the hectic, uh, you might say, uh, rushing around like you do in other places, especially in big urban or city places. Uh, country living, I guess, is a lot, lot, uh, lot more uh, relaxed, that's all. Whether it's paradise or a return to an earlier uncomplicated America, or just a place to get away from it all, Tangier Island has become the place to see, and thousands do just that every year. With cameras ready to record a life few have ever seen, the tourists arrive by the boatload twice every day. More than 100,000 walked down this pier last year alone. At first, they, they thought there's a little resentment and a little awkward, uh, uh, well, inconvenience. But now, now since they've been a coming over the years, uh, people have uh, begun to enjoy them. There's a few. Uh, gift shops around and a few little restaurants and uh, the little motor scooters and of course our hotel here everything uh, it brings in more money uh, to the people on the island and for the uh, little bit of inconvenience that it causes I think the uh, the uh, the economic uh, 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 situation is helped some by the tourists we usually have mostly middle-aged people come here, and they're very uh, well uh, 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 behaved, that is. They're, uh, they're friendly and congenial, and, uh, and uh, so we, uh, we're not bothered at all. We sort of enjoy it. It's, uh, it makes our summer's company, you know, we enjoy seeing them coming and go, and uh, we've had no trouble at all so far with the tourism. They will find little to do here. Most will rent bicycles to tour the island or take a guided tour by golf cart. Others stroll the streets visiting the museum or the two gift shops. One thing nearly everyone does is eat at the Chesapeake House. Some tourists will try and take pictures of the people that live here, but that's the easiest way to lose your camera. One would-be photographer, he came to the island and started snapping pictures of the locals. 
One waterman took offense. He broke that camera and threw the would-be photographer into the water. And really, the water is what this town is all about. The canals and inlets are the town's highways, and boats are their cars. Fishing, swimming, and crabbing. The young life of a Tangier boy is geared to becoming a waterman. Like his father, his father's father, and as far back as the family goes. You don't need sophisticated equipment, as this boy finds out, dipping for hardheads. These two boys are fishing for what they call minners. They don't need a fishing pole. A jar with a string around it and stale hot dog rolls do the trick. Look all the minners. Look all the minners. I do it. I put them on. Maybe a clock. In the 15 minutes we watched, the pair and two friends laughed and giggled as three minnows were caught. It's fun now. In just a few years, it will be work, fishing the waters of the Chesapeake Bay for the rest of their life. Sonny Parks is a waterman who's been pulling up crab pots up and down the East Coast. He's worked just about every port along the coast for some 45 years. Parks leaves every morning at 4 o'clock. By dawn, he arrives at his first crab pot, the first of 200 he'll pull up by hand during the day. Wire mesh traps are marked by floating buoys. Each crab pot may hold anywhere from six to 20 crabs. Four days a week, Parks brings his son Kelly along, learning the trade that will become his livelihood in a few years. Kelly separates the crabs that have been caught in the trap, throwing back the ones that are too small. This day, Parks will haul in more than 400 pounds of crab. They're down, they enjoy them. It's the type of work they enjoy. They're their own boss. And, uh, and they work the way they want. The very, uh, and they have their own equipment and another, I guess about the most rewarding thing about their work is that uh, they're working for themselves. The harder they work, uh, usually the better off they are. Whereas, uh, you know, as, uh, but uh, normally I think uh, the people, all the people here, uh, although they are rather uh, hard working uh, people, enjoy life and have life, I believe, easier than the, than the average city person because we don't have to do so much traveling back and forth, you know. And uh, but uh, normally, I believe, uh, I believe the people here enjoy enjoy the, their work better than the, than the average person. The men are usually all working for themselves. They have no boss, no foreman, or no supervisors to supervise them. They, they supervise their own. They work their own speed. Uh, if they want to work hard and fast to get the, uh, to get their work, their day's work done a little higher on here, they can do so. Or if they want to work uh, slow and leisurely and be an hour or two longer uh, completing their, their work, don't do that. Uh, if they want to, uh, uh, no matter what they want to do, they do it their own way, the way they like to do it best, you see because uh, they are their own boss, and that, that is a big advantage of, uh, 
of even if you're working hard or doing hard work, that's a great advantage of doing it your own way and being your own boss. With all of the pots checked, Parks heads to Crisfield, Maryland, where he sells the crabs. It's one o'clock and Parks' work is over. He heads back to Tangier and his family. A waterman from Tangier will make anywhere from $700 to $2,000 a week. When the summer ends and the crabbing season comes to a close, Watermen will tong for oysters. They take their small boats out every day but Sunday. And to a man, they prefer the freedom of the seas to any other life. The people that live here need only two things, the water and God. It is a deeply religious community. The biggest building is the Methodist Church. And on Tangier Island, nearly everyone goes to church. We still have our religious beliefs, our own fashion, you might say. Uh, there's no modern, no modern religion around here, you know. That's old fashion compared to a lot of places. But it's a, it's a good, it's a good sound religion, and it's uh, served the people in the island very well. It's been wonderful. Uh, the church has been a wonderful influence over the island and its people. This is the oldest house on the island. It belonged to Reverend Joshua Thomas, the preacher of the islands. In 1831, he was disturbed over the sale of spirits. And from that day to this, the sale of alcohol has been prohibited on Tangier. Tangier is connected to the mainland by this boat. Every day it brings mail from Crisfield. The boat delivers the island mail six days a week. Tangiermen proudly point to the fact that the small post office is one of the few in the country open on Saturday afternoon since the mailboat doesn't arrive here until 12.30. In addition to the mail, supplies are brought over daily. Until 10 years ago, when the first television sets were brought over, this was the main link to the outside world. Much of what comes in every day on the mailboat is delivered to one of the two grocery stores that serve the area. You can buy anything at a grocery store here on Tangier Island, like this one, the Haney Grocery Store. It's been sitting here for a hundred years. If you're used to the big supermarkets, this store will surprise you. You can buy everything from medicine to garden hoses, and if you're not tall enough to reach the goods, they can come tumbling down to you. Joan Parks does her shopping here. Today's list consists primarily of baby food. The chain of command goes from the shelves to daughter Christine to the checkout counter. That's six to three, yeah, Joan. Miss Annie helps run this store. The cash register has been broken for several weeks, so she must total all the items on a small adding machine.
There's one other thing you'll find here that's rarely available in the cities. That's credit. Mrs. Park charges most of her items and then pays $40 on her bill. There's another difference between Tangier and the big cities. There are no complaints over VEPCO bills. This power plant generates all of the power for Tangier. While the power is their own, their rates are rising too. There's hardly a crime problem here. There is one policeman and a jail. But the jail houses crab pots. If you are arrested for a misdemeanor and found guilty, punishment is public service, cleaning the streets or weeding the cemeteries. These girls are not serving a sentence. Rather, they're working at a summer job. The boys on the island won't take this kind of work. They can make better money on the crab boats. The girls work from 6 a.m. until 2, finishing before the heat of the day. Being a woman on Tangier is a different life from her counterparts in the city. Bertie Parks has lived on the island all of her life. She and her husband have thought about moving away, but they stayed for the children. How does a woman on Tangier Island spend most of her time? Well, in the home, taking care of her family, and, uh, well, I like to sew is a pastime. There's a strong emphasis on family life. Oh, yes, very strong. Is it difficult with your husband being away to raise the family? No, it's not, because uh, he's home. Uh, I think more than uh, um, maybe a man in the city. It's different hours. Uh, and maybe he leaves at four and he's back at two and he has the rest of the day with his family. Which a man in the city, he has to work until maybe five and six. I don't find it difficult. The school system, well, it's, it's different than being in the city. Yes. Uh, the children, um, well, they can walk to school. Uh, we have a very nice school. They have uh, a lot of advantages here that they don't have in the city. Like, like what? What advantages would it be for your daughter to go to school here? Well, for one thing, I don't, I don't have to, I wouldn't have to put her on a bus in the morning. She just has to walk maybe uh, a block. And I don't have to worry about her. Unlike the city, the women on Tangier Island don't have to work. Of the handful that do, most are employed on the island's only crab factory, picking crab meat eight hours a day. I don't know what you mean by that, but I would think that there's more uh, uh, leave, women's leave here on the island than anywhere because uh, uh, they are actually enjoy more freedom, I believe, than the average woman, really. I would think so. This is the Tangier Health Center. It's the only medical facility on the entire island. A nurse comes out here three days a week from the mainland, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, to tend to the needs of the people. There hasn't been a doctor on Tangier Island in six or seven years. The people are looking for one. 
In fact, they built a house for a doctor, but so far there have been no takers. And the only medical care available to the people that live here is a nurse that comes out three days a week. If someone needs immediate medical help, they are flown off the island to the closest medical facility in Virginia or Maryland. It's an uncomplicated life on Tangier, a life similar in ways to city living. Municipal services are provided, like garbage collection and a small fire department. The town has a mayor and a council that meets once a month. It's an island rich with history. British troops were housed here during the War of 1812. Part of the island was a fortification. The Navy inspected the land for possible use as a naval base after the war, but decided against using Tangier Island. They chose to put the naval installation in Norfolk. The people of Tangier Island depend for their livelihood on the sea, but the sea is their enemy. According to a recent government survey, this island is sinking at a rate of 20 inches every 100 years. And by the time the next 100 years pass, this island may be completely covered by water. The constant winds and tides are taking their toll here. Much of the island is already underwater, and the bay is trying to claim what's left. There's little solid land left for houses. It is a way of life that, while similar to country living, is vastly different, and it's quickly vanishing with the motion of the tides. I just describe it as a small, rural a town. You'd say anywhere, except instead of surrounded by farmlands and fields, you know, tended fields would be surrounded by water. Very little different. People enjoy life here. It's a nice place. Uh, it's a paradise for children and for older people. The people in, in well, I'm saying the working years, your working life, some people might become more ambitious and think they can do better away from the island. But as a rule, most of the people that were born here, they, they live here throughout their life. And, uh, and they enjoy it. It's a nice place to live. I like it here, I suppose, better than anywhere. Of course, I've not been everywhere, but I mean, the few places I have been, I would say uh, that Tangier suits me a great deal. It's just about the type of place. If I could have had my choice of living to a place, I would have, I would have chosen a place such as this, you know. And so I, I consider myself fortunate, you know, that I've been born here, and I spent me, I mean, just by pure, pure fate that I... I was born here and uh, grew up as a citizen on Tangier. I, I think uh, I consider myself uh, fortunate because it suits me uh, very much. There's a saying here, do not mock our walk or look down upon our quaint ways, for on these shores have walked the men of God. Inside the dwellings, laughter and love has flowed to make mansions of the homes. Our language is that of the past. Our native tongue speaks with truth, understanding and compassion and our walk is that of pride and labor, bent somewhat from toil, but never from shame. The most interesting thing about the island is its spirit. Once again, Vernon Bradshaw. The big advantage of our, uh, our uh, dense uh, population here I mean, although we have only approximately a thousand people, it is dense for this small island, is that we all know each, one another, each other. We're born and raised, and I know everybody, and I know all of their, fa their fathers and their mothers and brothers and sisters and their children, and so that's the way it is. And I everybody know. helps everybody else. Well, that is true, yeah. We're, we're like a big family. and. Uh, and it is especially uh, notable uh, how, uh, how eager we are to, that the people of this island are to help each other. And uh, nobody, nobody that needs help goes without getting it. It is usually known about, you know, and, uh, and it's, a, it's sort of a, it's a way of life. <laughs> 